Good morning fellow YouTubers. It's Sunday morning, August the 25th, 2024. And I'm just off out for another adventure. I've got bear in the back as usual. And today's journey, I'm gonna take them back to Thrunton Woods because when I went last week, um, the pathways that I wanted to take and go and get the views I wanted to get, I couldn't get because a lot of the pathways have been closed off. So I was diverted in different directions and couldn't get where I was going. So I looked at the maps and I've, um, I've, I've found a, an alternative route, I think, so I can get past the silver metal barriers to get it on the main track that goes up past Kalali um, Cliffs for the views over to the, the Chiviet. Um, and then go at the top where the, the, there's a stagnant pond and then you go across the Horton Ab uh, above, um, oh, what do you call it, McC McCartney's Cave, that, that area. Right, so I'm going back to Thrunton Woods and I'm just going to park up in a different place or look for a, an alternative path to get past the metal barriers. Right, so I'll bring you back. Bye for now. It's 7.52am in the morning, this Sunday morning, August the 25th of 2024. And I've just pulled off the A697 and started coming down the single uh, tarmac lane that takes you to the main car parks at Thrunton Woods. As you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of trees being chopped down now and I was up there coming out the tree line as I came along from Long Crags and the pathways have just been decimated <laughs> so you kind of see where you can but I'm just heading back down the lane here you go about a, a mile and a quarter to the car parks at the top of the hill there so I'm just going to park up, set up any time lapse away again and then I'm going to look for a pathway at the top end before you go around the bend down into the village of Thrunton I've talked how I want to get out because I've stuffed her away. Um, so I'm going to look for an alternative um, pathway so I can get past the metal barriers and walk up the track that I normally do to get the views over to the Chivit at the top end there. So I just thought I'd stop and show you where I am, give you the time and date and this that. Right, and how many miles have I done? I mean, when I parked up last time, I think I'd done 47.4 um, miles or something like that. Right, so what we've done. Yeah. Well, can I see past the ceiling here? 45.5 so far. So by the time I get to the main car park, it will be about 47 point odd miles from South Shields where I live. Right, so without further ado, I'll um, jump back in the corn, go along towards the main car parks. So bye for now. Okay, I've done 47.7 miles and I've just came past the main car parks and I've just been keep looking left to see where I can find the path. That'll take us up onto the path where I want to be, where I couldn't get to last time because of metal barriers. But I've just drove further along the, the tarmac lane here to where you come up through the village of Thrunton itself of the A697. So you come along that tarmac road past two houses on the right and then you come to this junction where you can turn left to go to the main car parks or turn right to go along the bottom road here. Now if I remember right, hey, hey! If I remember right, um, there's a bit of a lay-by car park type thing on the left, just inside here, where you can park up. So I'm just going to drive a little bit further into the forestry here and just see if I can find... I mean, there's a there's actually a marker post just next to the main um, signpost for Thrunton Forestry England here. So I wonder if you can go through there. But that's the beauty of parking up and walking. I'll just get the dog on his leader and start walking up the, up the road here and see if I can find a way through. Right, so I'll further do, I'll drive further on and see what my parking options are just inside the... I think it's about 150 yards up on the left, there's like a setback where you can park a car. Right, so I'll bring you back. Bye for now. Right, so I've come down about 150, 200 yards. Um, there's a, a, a wooden gate across the road, so you can't go any further by road, obviously. And I've just passed two signs on the grass on the left-hand side saying no parking has to be kept clear at all times. So basically... I don't want to risk getting a bloody ticket slapped on my windscreen you know, or wherever from the forestry. So I'm just going to use this um, junction here on the road to turn around the re reverse up there towards that gate and then just go back forward. And I'll park up in the main car park where I did last time and pipe my car across to the fishing lake and set up my um, time lapse camera in my windscreen as usual. Right, so I'll bring you back. Bye for now. Right, it's 8 am in the morning, the Sunday morning. The 25th of August 2024 um, and I've just, I looked, yeah, last night I was looking at the maps to see if I can bypass where they've got those metal barriers up ahead, stopping you going up off to the right and then taking the main path that takes it right up to the top end of the forest. 
So I've just drove past the main car park and went down towards where you come up from Front and Wood Village itself. And I've looked for a little gap in the trees to see if you can get on the old track that used to get onto that main track where I'm going to go. And it looks like I can, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just pissing myself laughing because it looks like you've got mattresses strapped on your back and it reminds us of the old joke, you know, when you talk about a woman, she, oh, she's a white mattress. <laughs> I just, when I seen that, I pissed myself laughing. Well, hope you enjoy your walk, lads. Right, so that's where your fishing lake pond is at the bottom there. So, I've came through the two villages of Long Horsley and Long Framlington to get here. Turned off the A697 um, Coalstream Road onto the Tarmac Road here and you come up about a mile and a quarter, mile and a half to come to the main car park here. And like I say, I've just parked the car in the same place as last time but this time I'm going to put the dog on his leader and walk further down the road about 5,000 yards and hopefully cut to a gap in the tree where there's a bit of a wooden fence. So that must have been a continuation of the main track but it was just like an old um, farmer's quad um, pathway or track so that's what I'm going to hopefully use to get up there to the right and get on that main track that I used to walk up all the time with a bit of luck there'll be no barriers across and no trees across the road to stop us getting there but that's why I've come back just to I mean it's that long since I've been to Thrunton Woods like last week I enjoyed the walk but um, when I was at the top end there where they've cut all the trees down there was no pathways available it was all still snapped off branches and stuff like that, it wasn't very pleasant. But hopefully I'll get a little bit further today. And last week I was ranting and raving about um, bags of dog poo and seeing how many there was on the grass there just at the main post. And just hopefully people will start taking notice of, where, you know, see dog poo, just flick it, get a stick and flick it into the long grass out the way so it's off the pathways. So nobody walks past it or walks over it, or children run, run across it. That's all you've got to do, and then it just dries up naturally in the, the sun. Right, so without further ado, the dog will be getting impatient now, he'll want to jump out. But I just wanted to set up my time-lapse camera, which I've done in the windscreen there. So it's pointing down towards the fishing lake, and the beautiful sun shining off it, getting that lovely glint. Right, so without further ado, I lock my camera away um, in the car, get him on his leader, lock up and then start recording with my GoPro 9. Right, so, bye for now. I'm just watching this um, elderly gentleman, he's just getting his two dogs out the, uh, the car, and they're both going for a poo on the grass there. And, like a good sheep, doing as he's told, he's getting the plastic bags out of his pocket that he's had to buy, and he's picked the shite up and put it in the bags and tied it in a knot. But, because there's no doggy poo bin, he's put them in his bloody pocket, so it's it's ridiculous. Now if, the, if he had just left the dog poo in the long grass there, the sun would just dry it out naturally, it would crumble and just go back into the land. So there's no need to put it in black plastic bags and tighten a knot and then throw it down, which most uh, dog owners do because they don't want to carry shite around with them, which is natural. Um, when you go to the main gate there, there's no doggy poo bins, and there's none at Thrunton Woods, so basically that's why um, they've thrown all the doggy But I mean, when I came here last week, there was about 10 tied in, not just at the main entrance into the forestry here, at the main gate, but they've all been picked up now, so obviously somebody's watched my video and thought, oh, we better tidy that lot up. But all the bags of poo have been picked up now, thankfully. But I'm, ju I'm just making a point of that gentleman there, he just, he's picked up the two lots of, of his two dogs and uh, put it straight in black plastic bags and tied it in a knot. So, whether well, he's going to dump that somewhere when he's taking a walk with his dogs, um, which, like I say, it won't rot, it doesn't break down plastic bags, so it'll last for another 50 to 100 years. So, it would be better off just to leave it in the long grass and let it dry up naturally and crumble down into the, into the landscape. Right, so uh, that's me run over. So, bye for now.
Right, it's 8.36 a.m. in the morning, the Sunday morning, the 25th of August, 2024. And I'm just about to get the dog out of the, the, the car here. And then I'm going to walk down the, the road about 2,000 yards and then look for this little gap in the trees. So I can get back on the old, the old track that I used to go along. Right, wait, son, wait. Right, are you going to give us a kiss? Give us a kiss. Give, give us a kiss, you. Are you not, you're not going out then if you're not going to give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. <laughs> Give us a kiss. Look, right. Oh, no. Oh, you don't, you don't want to give it, give Rander a kiss? Eh? Even though I'll bring you out and take you for walks, you bloody sod, you. Right, wait, wait, wait. Right, come on. Down you go. Right, wait, wait. Wait. Hey, hey. Right, keys. Lock up. Right, wait, son. Wait. Right, lock. So, right, so I had my time lapse running um, while I had the engine running. And when I turn the engine off and lock the car, I've got to push the button on my DigiPower battery, uh, which holds eight hours of recording. Uh, and now I'm recording my time lapse again, pointing over towards the fishing lake over there. But now, great. Oh, God. Look, he's picked up these um, doggy poo bags and he's put them down, tied them in a knot there. So hopefully, he'll pick them up and take them with him and put them in a bin somewhere. But they should have a doggy poo bin here at the main post. That's what's wrong. So people have got nowhere to put their doggy, doggy poo bags. But I mean, when I walked up that main track, last time I was here last week, it was just bags chucked down on the main track. Didn't even try to um, put it into the undergrowth in the long grass. They just left the bags in the middle of the track, tied up in a knot. Hey, come on, son, come on. And they've got notices there, clean up after your dog. And I've got um, the menus here for the, the tea room that you drive past at the bottom of the hill there. But there's the main area that they're still working on. The, the red, um, that's surrounded by the red marker post there. Right, so like I say, now I used to go up the track there and then uh, 2000, you can see where there's little barriers uh, where that, hey, hey, come on, yeah, where that double tree is. So you can't go up that track there to get on the main track to go up. So I've got to um, do a sneaky diversion and try and find the old track that will join that at the bottom. Right, let me turn this camera down a bit. Right, so I brought loads of me batteries uh, charged up, ready to go. Time lapse is gone, cars locked up, and I've got the dog on his leader. Because obviously there'll be cars coming up here. Right, so this is where I'm gonna start getting dragged from pillar to post. Where he wants to go, where he wants to go, and I'm trying to go where I'm going. Right. Right, so I've gotta go down the track to the next um electricity pylon, the one at the bottom, and then there's a gap in the, the trees where there's a bit of a wooden fencing. I think that's where I'm gonna squeeze through. Because when I first came along the road here, I drove deliberately past the, the main car park there and had a look down here to see if I could find the old path, which I think I have. Now, normally I don't come the same place twice, like within a week, because obviously um, it's not new to record, basically. But, a, right, come here, come here, come here. Come, come here, come here, get in there. Stay there, stay there, stay there. There's a little truck. If he smiled, his face would crack. Right, so there's another car just pulled up in the main car park there now. So it's, it is a very popular place there for mountain bikers and hikers. Um, so basically there's plenty of traffic and cars, people turning up. And especially now that it's a dry, it's quite a sunny day and it's early in the morning. So, hey, come on, son. Come on. When I get on the main path going up to the top, I can let him off when I'm away from the main roads. But there's a, an old 
perimeter wall, stone wall. So I looked at the maps and tried to judge where the gap in the, the trees are, and it's just by the the um, the first electricity pylon as you're coming up from Thrunton Village itself. So this is the guy that got his two dogs out the back of the car and straight away his dogs pooed on the grass so he started picking them up and put them in black bin liners big black bags and tying them in a knot, sorry Right Good boys, I'm good boy Right, come out the way. He's all right. He yeah, just he's, he's, he just, he, he just wants to lunge and come yeah. and play. No, you can't. No, you can't go with every dog, son. No, come on, come on. Right, come here. Wait. So he's just had a poo in the long grass uh, at the car park opposite, and then uh, he's just gone again. <laughs> so he's. Are you full of shit, son? <laughs> Now we're just looking further up, there's 25 yards, 30 yards up, there's a wire fence going across the top. And there's metal barriers up there, I can see. So I wonder if they've been going along there just to try and stop people going up the main path as well. Right, so it's not this electricity pile on it, it's the next one. But yeah, I can see um, the eight foot fencing up there not unless they've put them up ready for to stop the deer going in and eating up the new trees they plant that's possibly what it is because they normally put deer fences around where they've planted new trees stop them eating the top of it so they won't grow he's just happy to be on his, on his walk <laughs> He'd be even happier when I let him off his leader, so he can just run backwards and forwards. But yeah, another good reason for coming here is it's only 47.7 miles from South Shields where I live. So it's not far to drive, doesn't take long to get here in the mornings when there's no one on the road. And when you get in the forestry, you can get lost in the forestry and let him off. Let him have a run around off the leader to get some exercise where he needs, with it being a big dog. Right, so there's the last electricity pylon down there, look. So that's where I'm gonna try and cut through the trees. Try. But if not, what I'll have to do is double back to the main car park and just go up the main track and then try and squeeze through the metal barrier so I can get up that track. Or go right to the bottom, turn left and just follow the the bottom track along and then cut up um, from the bottom track to go up the wards where the, the, the stagnant pond is on Kalali. The only ways I can think of getting up there. What I could have done was drive further along and then came along the Whitt Whittingham Road and drove along the what you call the avenue by Deer Park and parked up there and just walked up Castle Hill. That's another way of getting there. It's all nice um, to come and re-explore this area. So my car, my car, sorry, my GoPro 8 is now recording a nice time lapse. So that'll be going for the length of time that I'm going to be away from the car. I've got my sandwiches in the car. I've remembered to put my oranges in my pocket this time, my waistcoat pocket. So if I get dry and parched, I can have me two oranges and give us some juice. And any water puddles I come across with him, he can get a drink. Right, so if you look over there, you can see all the trap. Hey, 
the traffic going up and along the A697 going towards Wooler. I cannot film with you, dragon. Stop. Now. I'm just talking to point my camera. He's, he's dragging us along, man. It's murder. So there's certain things you can do when you've got the dog on a leader. And certainly not <laughs> record uh, without getting dragged along and pointing your camera in the wrong direction where you want it to be. Right, so driving down here, I just look for, there's a bit of a, like, a lay-by, a passing place where you cut up into the trees. I hope I can get past the, the wooden fence and, and past the little bits of trees without getting my arms scratched because I've got a short sleeve t-shirt on. I went to bed just after midnight last night and I woke up at half two this morning. I thought, oh God. So I got up out of way, went back to bed and got a couple more hours sleep because you know, I must have dropped off straight away again. And then um, when I got up a second time, woke up a second time, I just jumped up quick and started getting ready. Put the kettle on, made a cup of tea while, while that was cooling. I went upstairs and got ready, got my boots on and me leg gaiters and stuff.